Look, Magnus is the image. I consider we got Gunslinger, Suicidal, Elysium, Endless. We're gonna try and get that uh, thing. The Lore Master's uh, Sanctum Arena, hopefully. My lips are all like uh, gross right now. So you might hear some lip smacking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to avoid it, or at least mute when I do it. But I'm giving you, I'm giving you the warning now. Uh, so I had, uh, I ordered sushi for dinner tonight. I ordered, um, yeah, some, some cucumber sushi rolls, uh, some rice with some miso soup, and then, uh, I had, uh, monkey brain, which, monkey brain is one of my favorites, like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's called an appetizer, I think, but it's kind of, big enough to, to be like a meal for, for, for one, in my opinion, anyway. It's not necessarily a, a well-balanced meal, but it's filling enough and, and like large enough, like physically large enough to to kind of meet the the, back in the, game. the, the, the requirements for, for being a meal from just a, a pure, like, you know, energy and kind of, kind of perspective. Anyway, it's, it's not actual monkey brain, okay? Boots, but it's it's one of my favorite things to order because it, it makes people people get grossed out by it, right? Like when you don't know what monkey brain is, and you're and you're like looking at a menu from some like Japanese sushi restaurant or something, you know? And you're like, monkey? They sell monkey brain here? It's not it's not actual monkey brain. It's it's just called monkey brain. But I love ordering it. Um, because it's like delicious, but it's also it's, it's also got that kind of like shock value to it, right? Which is is valuable to me um, because you get to and people are like, "What are you ordering?" Oh, you know, just monkey brains. <laughs> it's just it's fun. I find it fun because people always get so grossed at it. But what it is is it's a deep fried avocado cut into quarters and then stuffed with. Um, like sushi stuff. Sure. Typically, you'll have like uh, tuna, spicy tuna, crab meat, um, you know, carrots, maybe cucumbers. Who knows, right? Like stuff with sushi stuff. It's it's basically a sushi roll, but instead of having a roll, you have a deep fried avocado. And it is it it is delicious. I love avocado. I don't actually like like I couldn't eat an avocado. I don't know, I, I probably could, but, um, I haven't. I haven't actually tried avocado, just, like, not in sushi or something, honestly. Um, but I, I love it in sushi. It's delightful, I think, anyway. Uh, but I, I like avocado. So it's a, it's a nice little treat that I get every now and then. Can't have it too often because it's deep fried avocado. You know how much fat there is in that. It's 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 just a, like a pound of fat is is what you're eating right there. It's definitely not a healthy thing, but it it is a delicious thing. You know, there's probably a reason for that. They typically go hand in hand. But it is it is delightful. So that's what I had for for dinner tonight. I also played my mother in chess a few times today. So uh, I came up, she saw me playing chess on my phone, and then I was like, you want to play? And she was like, okay, yeah, I'm good at chess. I'm like, yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, but we, uh, we ended up playing a bit. She was actually pretty decent. She, uh, she picked up on things pretty quickly. I tried to Scholar's Mater on the first game we played, and she was defending against it pretty well. I don't know whether that was sheer luck or if she was seeing it and trying to avoid it. I'm fairly certain it was mostly luck with the with the smidgen of uh, forethought. So I wasn't able to scholars major. I went really hard on it too. I went hard on it. I ended up uh, sacking my queen, just trying to make it work and trying to get it. I still ended up winning that round. Um, she ended up hanging her queen. And then I uh, took it. <laughs> of course, you take... Somebody hangs the queen, you take that dang queen. 
Um, if, if you can't see some kind of trap, you know, it might be a Bozik Gambit or something, but uh, somebody, somebody's hanging their queen. That's my queen. Um, so yeah, I took her queen and then ended up mating, I think, with the knight. With the, the knights and pawns, and I think a rook. Um, second game, I, I tried to go for the scholar's, ga uh, scholar's mate again. I'm like, I was pushing for that scholar's mate, okay? Second game, I did end up getting it in like seven turns or something. I wasn't, well, no, actually, in the second game, I wasn't going for the scholar's mate. I was uh, playing a Vienna game. I was, I was playing a Vienna game. Uh, and then uh, I saw the opening for the scholar's mate, and I'm like, I wonder think you could make it work so I ended up pushing the the bishop and the queen and then mating in like seven or eight turns or something which uh, is pretty long for the scholars mate but you know it, uh, it happens um, and then the third game uh, we ended up stalemating uh, she moved her queen into a position where it couldn't move and I didn't realize and then uh, ended up uh, moving something else not giving her king space to move and that was a stalemate of course so that was that was a disappointment that was that was a, that was a draw and I was I was I was really disappointed that game kind of went on for a while too cuz uh, it's just it kept I kept checking and checking and checking and I just I couldn't get the mate just with like the pawn structure and everything kind of littering the board it was it was really hard to go for mate and so I are we not playing oh yeah there's the sets so I, I literally couldn't see sets I was about to say are we not getting zeds right now but they're all just crawlers and I couldn't see them um, so it's a bit weird having a tier 4 deagle with uh, out having two of them but you know what it works uh yeah, I was, I was just like constantly checking, and I'm like, I should be able to mate you. I had I had uh, a bishop, a knight, a rook, and a queen, and all she had was like five pawns or something. I'm like, this should be no problem for me to mate. But she just kept moving the king, and and getting it out of all the the traps I was trying to get it into, and I couldn't manage to get it lined up. And then she was like just playing really really well in that game, and uh, ended up pushing for the. Uh, for the draw, for the stalemate, which made me really mad, because <laughs> I was like, "There's no way you don't get mated here. Like, you should, you should be, you should be mated. This is, this is it. Okay, you're dead. You should, like, you should just resign." But it was a draw, and she doesn't know how to resign anyway. And she wouldn't resign because, like, when you're playing family, I don't think that you should resign, or that there should be any kind of like responsibility to anyway. Um. So she didn't because, like, and not like like in a, in a normal game, I'm like, okay, I've won. That that wouldn't have been a draw because you know, whoever would have resigned when when all they had was a queen, some pawns to me having more pawns, and also a bishop, a knight, a rook, you know, like that's that's definitely uh, you have to make some pretty bad mistakes for that to to be a loss anyway. For it to turn into a stalemate is one thing, you know, like that's that's a still a mistake but um, one that uh, is, is kind of you know but um, so then I was playing well I, then my food came after after that game and she was like hey let's, let's uh, quick 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 like rematch before you go eat and I'm like okay I want to eat but so I ended up uh, like scholars mating in like five moves or something and then I went and ate and uh, played some more. Didn't get another scholar's mate. She was really, she was improving pretty quickly, honestly, and she wasn't making too many like major blunders. She would hang a lot of pieces um, and hang her queen a couple of times. But you know, for for an, a novice chess player, that's expected, right? Like I still do that. I I did it, in fact, uh, a couple of times in the game. She just she took it once and didn't take it another time. It's always funny when you hang a queen and people don't take it. You, you can see them like thinking a lot on that turn and then they don't take it. And I'm like, okay, you thought I'm trying to trap you. But the reality is I'm just dumb. I'm just dumb. 
You over you overestimate my uh, my planning here. My plan was to uh, not move my queen there. But uh, you know, anyway, it was it was good fun. I had uh, I had fun playing chess against my mother. I don't think I'll ever lose against her. I just I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, I'm not gonna push for the scholars made of time because it's not really a thing that's gonna work very well anyway. Um, and then on top of that, I think it's just rude. But. I, uh, I had fun. I had good fun doing that. So the chessboard isn't here yet, but when it does get here, we'll probably play. Might have uh, a little chess tournament in the family, perhaps? I don't know. Love this gig. The thing is, is I want I want my family to be good at chess, you know? Because if you have a chess tournament, I'm the one that wins. Like, I'll just... My father might. I, I suspect he has some chess capability just from being like a... Generally, pretty like calm and patient person. But I don't think he'd rush any moves. I, th I think he'd just kind of naturally think things through a little bit more. Um, and and I'm I'm not like a necessarily great player, so the average person who's going to kind of like think things through and understand how things are going to move and all that is is, is probably got a, a pretty good chance against me. Uh, my father's probably the only one in that kind of position in this household. Um. But uh, it would be, 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 be fun if, if, if the family were, were enjoying chess and, and, and playing a little bit more regularly. Because it's a fun game, right? It's a fun game. I got some friends who are playing it. I got friends playing uh, chess. I got friends who used to play chess and go to tournaments and stuff. Ooh, we got the uh, books. Uh, we're, there's a book like behind me, isn't there? We'll, we'll, we'll grab this book over here. You gotta grab this book right when you spawn, okay? It's it's uh, it's crucial to the strategy of the book speed run. It's crucial. Family had uh, they had wings for dinner tonight, chicken wings. I didn't I didn't like them so much. They were uh, this like sweet sauce and like left in the crock pot for too long, so they were they were like just falling apart <laughs> like literally you would pick them up oh and you have to like hit you e on it come on you big dummy um they're like literally falling apart as you picked them up and you know some meats are okay when uh, they're falling apart like that chicken wings aren't really one you know like pulled pork sure maybe brisket okay oh we're on tiny terror that's why i literally I was trying to shoot him, and I was like, why is he getting so far away? Like, why is he so far away? I, but it's, it's Tiny Terror. I'm, I'm like, dumb. I, th I, th I literally thought he was moving farther away. The perspective, man. Nah. I hate Tiny Terror. I don't think many people like Tiny Terror, though, you know? It's, it's kind of a bad uh, thing, honestly. But here's what it is, is what it is. We got the Christmas coming up in a uh, in a couple of days here. Well, like twelve, but it's twelve days of Christmas, right? Um, let's see. Did I buy the two D uh, M1911s? I think I only want one. Now this like nail is really bugging me. It's really bothering me. I don't like it, dude. Um, yeah, so I, I only want the one M1911, I think, because this is plus two. Yes, yeah, so we only want the one. Yeah, because this, this ends up being 15 with the Glock. And the M1911 is, is nicer as a, as a single pistol, in my opinion, anyway. Um... Yeah. How's Terraria going? How's the Terraria cheating going? Uh, it's going pretty good. I've been continuing to poke around with them. I mean, like I said, I'm not really spending that much time doing it. 
I, uh, it's like, you know, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, maybe like 40 minutes here, there, maybe, but like, it's, it's really, I'm not, I'm not investing a ton of time into it. It's not like my main priority to make it happen, you know? It's kind of just a fun side project of mine to, to get it, uh, a little bit more intimate with the, uh, internal workings of, uh, Terraria. I'm, I'm getting there. I've, I've found the, uh, address for, um... for uh, like the character animation, so I'm able to put my character in whatever animation I want. Or not animation, but stance. Like, uh, with, are you holding something, moving, running, you know, dashing, um, flying, falling, jumping, you know, like whatever that kind of stuff. Like what, what stance is your character in? Like I'm able to, to manipulate that. Um, which is, is good, so that kind of helps with the fishing script, so I'm able to accurately be like, yeah, we're not fishing right now, so just, um, like, start fishing, please. <laughs> uh, I still have not found any kind of pointer or offset or anything to get the, uh, like, what address has the fish on the, um... Still can't get that. I do have the address that sets that variable, though. So I, I can, like, get that, I guess. And then and then work from there. But I haven't... I only spent, like, ten minutes on it today, so... Not really... Uh, oh, we didn't, we didn't put the books in. We're never going to get the, the dang Lore Master Sanctum if we don't put the books in. We did get the Botanical Arena in a, uh, in a format, in a four-round thing. So it is possible for us to get it in the four rounds, but it'll, it'll be a lot simpler if we just do this. Please, I beg of you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly working on it over time, you know? It'll, it'll eventually happen. One of my goal with it, like, honestly, is to... Uh, almost build mods for Terraria 1.4 because there aren't any and I'd like to like be really really familiar with uh, exactly what's kind of happening uh, in the memory so that I can navigate it a little bit easier because what once, once you understand like what everything means in there and then like where the variables are stored and stuff it's pretty easy to like find stuff just viewing through the memory I, sh I showed it off in the last video the memory viewer once, once you kind of know what stuff is, you, you can find it, like, pretty easily. You, you recognize, you know, like, the numbers and the... And the... Just, just the values and the... Stuff in it to be like, well, this... In this location, this number... Very good chance that that's the... You know... This thing. You, you kind of begin to recognize things. And then you can start to build together patterns. Um, to find specific things just by like you know like okay so before the like player object is always like this array of, of bytes so you can search for that and then offset from that to the thing and kind of search around like that you can also find pointers to things um, and like kind of like offset a little bit off of that and like there's, there's a whole bunch of things that you can do that um, Give you a little bit more of a consistent... I should have upgraded this. Doesn't really matter, though. A uh, whole bunch of things you can do that end up giving you a very consistent... Um, like, address, memory kind of, like, knowledge, I guess. I don't know the words I'm trying to say, but... What I'm, what I'm trying to say... Is, uh, in time... The internal workings of Terraria will, will just kind of make a lot more sense to me, you know? Like, I'll know, like, okay, yeah, like, this is where the chests and storage or things are stored. This is where, uh... This is where the player object and player's inventory is stored. Um, and then from that, you know, you can start to, like, hook into things and, and write your own code. Um, and uh, kind of, like, modify functions and methods in the game to, to do what you want and... Then you start getting like mods and stuff, and 
and all that. But that, that's a bit of a long-term thing for, for right now. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly just trying to build, like, auto-hotkey, you know, quote-unquote mods for the game. I'd like to make it... Um, like, adding a new item, for instance, through just, like reading through the memory and then writing your own code into the memory, that's possible. Um, it's really not a simple task. You're, you're really better off like modifying uh, like, like the base executable or um, modifying the game's data like the actual data that's stored on your system so that when the game loads it up, it's all there and stuff. Like, that's that's the better way to, to handle that. But, um, something like drawing stuff on the screen, you can do that through memory manipulation fairly easily. Um, like something like magic storage, for instance. I don't know how it works. Like the actual mod for magic storage. I don't know how that works exactly. Um, but something similar to it, uh, where you would just like draw, like create a GUI basically, and then uh, that searches through like all the nearby chests or something. Like something like that is is not that hard to do through just uh, like writing your own code and inserting it into the memory. That's that's really not that bad. Um, It's not that bad. You wouldn't be able to. It would. It would be hard to get it to where you like have an item that you place in the world that you can then like right click that opens the GUI. But just having like a hotkey that opens a GUI um, that searches chests nearby. That's not hard. Well, like rel relative in in relative terms, it's not hard. It is. It is still a uh, quite a difficult process, but it's uh, substantially easier than like adding in an item in the game. Um, so, it's, you know. But, uh, I'd, I'd like to do something like that. I don't really need to. My chests are, like, highly organized in Terraria, but it would be a fun thing to do. I'm sure a lot of people would love that. Um, making just, like, an auto-hockey script that just searches through all the chests in the world to find a specific item, that's probably not that hard either. Depends. I haven't found how they store chests and like the chest uh, contents in memory yet uh, so I don't know how easy it would be to do that but I'm I'm assuming that they would have an array of like storage entities or something that they'd have an array of um, uh, like I don't know I'm, I'm assuming that in the, in the game's code, there would be an array of all of the chests in the world. Whether that's an array of all the chests, or whether that's an array of all of the things that can store items, or if it's an array of all of the blocks in the world, or, you know, whatever else. But, like, there would be an array somewhere that you can parse through that would uh, find you all of the, uh, the chests. And you just have to find that array in memory, uh, and hope that it's a linear array. Um, and then uh, you, know, you have you have the list of, of things, and you'd hope that it's it's not a list of all the blocks in the world, because that would end up being a little bit tricky. Because you'd probably have to like cache the chests and um, stuff, which which would be a little bit annoying, especially if you wanted to make it to only like lurk nearby, because you'd have to like yeah, it would, it would be a little bit a little bit tricky. Typically, the way you'd want to make that work is when a chest is placed, it's added to the list, and then when a chest is removed, it's removed from the list, so that uh, you don't have to do, like, on-the-demand calculate what's nearby. It would just kind of, like, always have that information readily available. You know? You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to, like, search through every single block every single time you want to use that kind of GUI. And that's... That's something that would be hard to, to implement just through, like, manipulating the memory. So you'd have to cache it. And then have, like, a, a button to recache or something, you know? And... It's just it's a complicated thing. Anyway, my, my goal is, is to make some some very, 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 very basic uh, mods for the game through auto-hockey. Just things to add a little bit that uh, I feel the game is missing. 
I might make a way to uh, farm ores and stuff. Because there, there are a few items that I need, like... There, there are a few items that I wish were renewable that just aren't. So I might make some mods through AutoHotKey to, to implement ways to, to get renewable, like marble or renewable iron or whatever, renewable lizard bricks, you know, something like that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm again assuming that it would be possible for me to. Uh, I haven't actually like looked at it, but I'm, I'm assuming there'd be an array of uh, the recipes in the game, and you could probably just like add to that, and then you have like a new recipe, a new crafting recipe. Um, we didn't actually pull the lever. You're my new uh, so, you know, there, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that I can do, but I don't want to do too much because none of it is permanent, right? As soon as there's any update to Terraria, which apparently there won't be, but they've said that before. Um, <laughs> but as soon as there's any update, all of it is, like, done. Um... And they have to get like new pointers and offsets and all that. Uh, and then even just like when you save it or move to a new computer, you, like it's it, it's just the better way to do it is to modify the actual like compiled binary and like the DLLs and all of the game data and stuff. So it's actually like implemented directly into the game's code. So it's to be like good like that, right? Like so what what you, you want to do is you want to um. Find a way to, like, I don't know, like, reverse engineer the game's code and then, like, recompile the, uh, all of the DLLs and whatever else that's, that's making up the game with, with your additions in it, because that would be significantly easier. Now, poking through memory and stuff is, is a, kind of the starch to that, although it's officially supported now. Uh, so I think they're working together to make uh, Tmod Loader 1.4 work. And the reason it's taking so long is probably because they have like new features that they want to add and like make it better now that it's officially supported. And it's like the final version of Terraria. So they, I'm assuming they're trying to make it better in a, in a big way. And like logistics and all that kind of stuff is why it's taking so long for it to exist. But I'm having fun with it anyway. I'm having fun with it. That's what matters, right? At the end of the day, it's not really about making anything. It's about having fun doing it, to me. Hated that. <laughs> yeah, get out of here, dude. So we should get the Lore Master Sanctum in this uh, in this run, I'm assuming. I'm hoping. First Minecraft video comes out tomorrow. That's exciting, right? I've decided it is going to be going up at 1 p.m. Pacific time tomorrow. So, uh... Yeah, I, I was I was gonna say it's, you know, however long after this video goes live, but I'm not really putting my videos up at the same time anymore, so that's not really a good point of reference, I guess. It's weird because I'm I'm starting to be like more consistent with the with getting the nighttime one up than the morning one, which which is like backwards to me, but. Uh, I don't know. So to me, it's mostly important that I just get two videos up every day. I'm also I'm thinking of making chess videos. I'm not good at chess at all. I'm like garbage. But I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking I might make some chess videos. Are we on Tiny Terror? I feel like we are. I didn't pay attention though. But I'm thinking I might make some chess videos. Could be fun. I was watching. Uh, I was watching Northern Lion play chess this morning. Good water. I was watching him play chess this morning. And, well, this afternoon, I guess. And, uh... Nope, not what I want. He he was saying... The, 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 the black made a move... That attacked his queen, and so so he was he was already kind of in like a weird situation where if he moved his bishop, um, it would uh, let a knight fork his uh, 
his um, queen and his king. So he'd, he'd lose his king, or he'd, he'd lose his queen if he moved his bishop. Right. So if if he if he moved his bishop, the the, the knight would uh, fork the king and the queen, and then he'd have to move his king. Uh, cause he wouldn't have anything, like, that could take the, uh, the knight, cause the bishop was the only thing protecting that square. And then, uh, the knight would take the queen, and he'd lose his queen. So, the opponent then moved the knight into position that could be attacked by the bishop, and was also attacking the queen. So he was, he was like looking at it and he, he drew the arrows on the board and he's like, I can't take this knight with the, or he, he, was, he was like, so uh, the, the opponent's trying to get me to take the knight so that he can fork the, the king and the queen, but I'm not, I'm not giving up my queen for, uh, for a knight. So he ends up taking, uh, the first knight that was threatening the fork with, uh, with a different bishop and then the new knight that came in that was attacking the queen takes the queen and I'm just like yeah you just went on this like 10 second ramble about how you're not gonna trade the uh, the queen for a knight and then just like literally did that and it was it, it was probably some of the the, the fun it was probably the funniest blunder I've ever seen in chess he ended up losing that match of course because like you blunder your queen good luck <laughs> You're not in a good position after that point, but uh, it was uh, it was comforting to see that even he sometimes forgets how knights move. <laughs> I didn't I didn't see it either, for the record. Like he 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 was like, yeah, I can't move my bishop. I'm like, that's a good point. You can't do that. And then uh, no, actually, I did see it. I just kind of didn't internalize it because he moved his knight, and I was like, oh. You should like move your queen, and then he he didn't, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even see that, but I guess I kind of did. It was it was like uh, this this baseline understanding that the queen's in danger, but I don't know why move the queen. But I I wasn't able to to see it too clearly either. Did I see? It? I, I honestly I honestly can't remember. It was uh, just after I'd woken up. Um, I had like a pretty terrible sleep actually. Uh, cause I ended up, I got up at like 9am or something. Stayed up for a bit. Come on, just give me the Lore Master Sanctum. Stayed up for a bit. And I was just like really tired. So I laid down on the couch for a while. Read, uh... Murabito Desu... Nanika. I think. Is that it? Can't remember. Uh, so I'm a villager, so what is is the English name? Um, and finished that. I was like really tired though, so I, I ended up going back to sleep at like 11. And I got up at like 12. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm not that's not that's not good enough we're going we're continuing okay like I haven't I haven't decided that I'm done sleeping so we're just I'm still sleeping all right you don't get to just end it there so I fall back asleep jeez you like left holy cow um, and then I caught up at like one and I'm like no like I'm still tired we're I'm still sleeping okay you don't get to you don't get to just stop this like that okay please Please. Oh, goodness. Please at least, like, stun somebody. I just... <laughs> what the heck? Alright, we're on Poundemonium. I'm like, why are there so many Flesh Pounds? But that's right, we're on Poundemonium. I, like, just completely forgot. Okay, I would have played this differently had I known. But I had forgotten. I had forgotten! Anyway, so I ended up, like, just getting up at, like, 1 or whatever. And I'm like, no, I'm not done. So I went back to sleep and I ended up getting back up at like 1.30 and I'm like, no! So I just kept doing that until 3 o'clock and I'm like, okay. I have to put the 8 a.m. video up at this point. So I had to get up and like do stuff, but it was 
terrible, terrible sleep. So I'm like not tired now, but yesterday was a happy day. Today is a is a depressing day. I'm not depressed. I might be, but it was uh, it, it was a day of not much. It was a day of not much. I'm reading the. Uh, so I have the OBS thing open. It says that there's a new update available. Let's get on Elysium because we're gonna be doing some more of that in the next video. And it's uh, 26.0.2. Hotfix changes. Fixed the core audio encoder not working properly after 26.01. Jim. Also Jim's fault. <laughs> um. Let's see. So in 26.01, yeah, he ended up, um, the window capture on Mac OS, that probably wouldn't have done it. Projectors would be unintentionally removed under certain circumstances, probably wouldn't do it either. Improved UI performance, reducing CPU usage of the user interface. Turns out this was due to the audio meters being redrawn. That could do it. So you probably did that, ended up messing with something with the encoder or something that uh, was relying on the audio meters constantly being redrawn or something, and then that caused uh, the core audio encoder not working properly. That's funny. I'm, I'm, I'm just like looking at it and it's just Jim. Also Jim's fault. <laughs> it's good, it's good. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you for watching. Remember to like the video, like, subscribe, see more of the future comments if you have anything to say, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.